اَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ And is one who was dead. How was he dead? He was dead because of his disbelief. He was dead because of his ignorance. And we gave him life. What kind of life? The life of iman, the life of knowledge. And we made for him light by which to walk among the people. Can this person be like the one who is in darkness, never to emerge therefrom? No. One person is in light, and the other person is in darkness. Can they both be the same? Never. They can never be the same. They are completely different. Why? Because their thinking is different, their actions are different, their thoughts are different. Very different. So those who have been given the Qur'an, and those to whom the light of the Qur'an has not yet reached, can they be the same? No, they can never be the same. So isn't it necessary that people who do not yet know the Qur'an, they should be told about the Qur'an? Should they not be informed? So that even their thinking is enlightened, their lives are enlightened, they also have faith, they also have life of their hearts. Do they not deserve that also? Yes, Allah is the one who guides people. But remember that Allah has made us ummatan wasatan. Who is wasat? Wasat is that which is in the middle, a link. So we are in the middle. We are link between people and Allah. Meaning if they want guidance, then where is it that they will find it? They will find it with the amana, with the trust that Allah has given to us. And what is that amana? This Qur'an. This Qur'an. So isn't it necessary for us to take this light forward? Hmm? Tell me, is it not necessary? It is, right? Just think about it. If we are content inside, we find peace at times of trouble because of this Qur'an that Allah has given us. If our doubts about Allah, about the deen, they have disappeared since we have come to know of the Qur'an, then do other people not deserve the same thing? Do they not deserve the same thing? Just think about it. How was your life before you knew the Qur'an? Did you have questions, unanswered questions? Did you have worries and problems and, and doubts and uncertainties? What happened gradually, gradually as you come to know of the Qur'an, as you learn about the Qur'an, those fears, those worries, those questions, they go away. They go away. Just like when a person is in darkness, is he afraid? He's afraid to even take one step forward. But when there's light, can you move around? You can run. You can run. You become fearless. So other people deserve that also. So as you come here, make sure that you also call others. Encourage them to come and listen to Qur'an also. كَذَلِكَ زُيِّنَ لِلْكَافِرِينَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Thus it has been made pleasing to the disbelievers that which they were doing. So what do we see in this ayah? That Allah is the one who guides. So whenever we need clarity, whenever we need to deepen our understanding of anything, who is it that we need to ask? We need to ask Allah for that guidance. We need to ask Him for this light. And thus we have placed within every city the greatest of its criminals to conspire therein. Another force that prevents people from haqq is what? The influential people of that society. This doesn't mean that all people who have influence in society, they are evil. But many times, many times, what they're calling people to is not the Qur'an and Sunnah. What they're calling people to is not controlling their desires. What are they calling people to? What do they call people to? Just do what you want. Right? Just do it anyway. You live only once. Right? That just, just do it. Have fun. Just have fun. I mean, it's amazing. Even if you just accidentally hear the lyrics of some songs, it's surprising. What are they calling people to? What are they promoting? What are they even encouraging in people? I took your girl, but I'm not, I don't feel bad. I don't know this. Allahu astaghfirullah. And I was in a store the other day, and it was just going on and on and on. It was like, how sad. You took somebody's girl, and you don't even feel bad about it. I don't feel bad that she likes me. I don't know what that guy was saying. But he was saying it over and over and over again. Like at least he said it 50 times. What are they promoting? What is being promoted generally if you think about it? People who are at the top. I'm not saying government leaders. Any person who has influence. What is he promoting generally? Is it haya? Is it modesty? 
Is it that we should become servants to Allah? No. Become a slave to your desires. Isn't that? Every vice is glorified. It is made to look so beautiful and attractive. Filth. Filth is made to look attractive. So over here, Allah is telling us to open our eyes and ears. Think. Many times these people at the top, these people at the top, who are they? They are the greatest of the criminals. And they lead people astray. So don't just follow blindly. But they conspire not, except against themselves, and they perceive it not. Meaning how long will they enjoy this freedom? So we see that there will always be people who will oppose the truth instead of supporting it. You will always find people who oppose the truth. They are at a position where they can influence others. But instead of supporting the truth, what are they doing? Opposing it. I mean, isn't it amazing you find out there is a class at university about Islamic history, for example. And you're like, wow, Islamic history? Quran? Hadith? And once you go sit there, and you read the book and you listen to the lectures, and what happens? What happens? You leave with more doubts and questions than faith. So this is something that you'll find everywhere in the world. People with authority, many times you will find them opposing the truth. So don't get influenced by them. Use your mind, use your reason, use the haqq that Allah has given to you. And when a sign comes to them, they say, never will we believe until we are given like that which was given to the messengers of Allah. Allah is most knowing of where He places His message. They will afflict those who committed crimes, debasement before Allah, and severe punishment for what they used to conspire. They're very arrogant, Allah will humiliate them. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said that Allah observed the hearts of his servants. And he found the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the best. So he chose him and sent him with his message. Allah chose the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of the purity of his heart. So Allah knows who to give prophethood to. فَمَن يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَن يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ So whoever Allah wants to guide, He expands His heart to contain Islam. That despite all of these opposing forces, these pressures, external pressures, this darkness, this misguidance, what happens? Allah still guides some people to the truth. Allah still guides them. Why? Because they want to be guided. So when they want to be guided, then what happens? One layer of darkness is dispelled after the other, is removed. And in that darkness even, in that atmosphere where, in those circumstances where there's so much opposition to the truth, still Allah guides them to the truth. You know, a man came to Mecca and he was told, there's a crazy man in here, don't listen to him. So he said, well, I'm a doctor. I can help him. I can cure him. I'll, I'll, go do, I'll go do some ruqya. Let me see what his problem is. So he went to see the Prophet ﷺ and he asked him, what do you say? What's, what, what's your problem? And he, what's wrong with you? And so the Prophet ﷺ recited some Qur'an to him and he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah You see there was that well-wishing for people, right? The heart was good. And what happened? Allah guided him. Even though there was so much external pressure, don't even go to this man. Don't even listen to him. So Allah guides these people. Allah guides some people. So if Allah has given us the ability to sit right now with the book of Allah, who should we be grateful to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about it. Aren't there so many other things that we could have been doing right now? So many things, right? I mean, if you go to the mall right now, probably you won't find a parking spot. Even though it's only 11.30 in the morning. Isn't that so? I mean, you go to maybe even Wonderland today, despite the rain, you'll see it busy. Isn't it? I'm not saying these things are haram. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is that there could be so many other things that we could have been doing right now. But Allah gave us the ability on a Sunday morning. On a Sunday morning. Not a Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Sunday morning to come and sit and read Qur'an. Sit with the book of Allah. 
We could have been sitting at Tim Hortons. We could have been sitting at the back. We could have been using our phone. But if Allah gave us the ability to direct our full attention to the book of Allah, sit with it, look at it, read it, write, then this is nothing but Allah's favor. This is nothing but Allah's gift on us. So let us be grateful. Because لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you're grateful, then I will increase for you. And whoever he wants to misguide, he makes his chest tight and constricted. The person whom Allah does not wish to guide, then what happens to him? As Islam is mentioned, as Quran is mentioned, even though he may be reading the book, listening to the same speech, what happens? The heart feels tight and narrow. So constricted, so uncomfortable, each time the Quran is mentioned, each time Allah is mentioned, each time Jannah is mentioned, Nar is mentioned, they feel so constricted, as though he was climbing into the sky. And going up is something very difficult to do. Isn't it? When you have to climb stairs, and not just one flight of stairs, several, then what happens? Your chest begins to feel tight. Likewise, there are some people who feel suffocated when they have to sit with the book of Allah, when they have to read the book of Allah. They just can't wait to put it down and go and do something else. Thus does Allah place defilement upon those who do not believe. So those people who believe, who desire guidance, who willingly seek it, then Allah gives it to them. So here we need to see, Allah has given me the ability to sit here. But how am I sitting? Happily or begrudgingly? By force or do I choose to? Do I choose to read the Qur'an? Do I choose to listen to it and reflect on it? Amr bin al-As radiallahu anhu said that when Allah instilled the love of Islam in my heart, I came to the Prophet sallallahu and I said, stretch out your hand so that I can give bay'ah to you. When Allah instilled the love of Islam in my heart, because he knew it to be true from before, he knew it. But what was preventing him? These external pressures, this dislike for the truth. So sometimes it happens that we know, we know what the Qur'an says, we know what Allah wants us to do. Ask us the fiqh, ask us any question, we know the answers. But when it comes to our actions, missing. When it comes to the state of the heart, very different. There's no love for the book of Allah, that love is missing. We need to ask Allah for that love. That Ya Allah, you brought me so close. You grant me love also for your kalam. وَهَذَا صِرَاطُ رَبِّكَ مُسْتَقِيمًا And this is the path of your Lord leading straight. We have detailed the verses for people who remember. لَهُمْ دَارُ السَّلَامِ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ For them will be the home of peace with their Lord. They will have the home of peace. What a great reward. For what? For accepting the truth. And He will be their protecting friend. وَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمْ وَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمْ Allah will be their friend. بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Because of what they do. Do you ever feel alone sometimes? Alone. Has it ever happened that you go somewhere, maybe for, for an exam somewhere, or you go to do some, some work at some government office or something, and you're the only one with the hijab? You're the only one? Maybe in your classroom? You feel alone, right? Now at that time, what happens? You feel like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. You feel scared, you feel nervous. Everybody's looking, nobody's doing it. Is it really fault? Is it really fault? Then, then, then you start thinking, right? You start doubting yourself. Am I even making the right choice? Is there some allowance somewhere? Because you feel alone. What does Allah say? Those who prefer Him, then Allah will be their friend. He will give them the home of security. The home of peace where there is no fear. In this dunya, no matter how many friends you have, do you have fears? Do you have fears? Yes. I think you have more fears when you have friends. When you have more friends. Why? Why did you say this to me? And how come you didn't call me? And why did you do this? And why didn't you do that? Right? It happens. That the more people you know, the more problems you have to deal with. I'm not saying be antisocial. Okay, don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying that in this world, no matter how beautiful a relationship you could be in, it always has its negatives. The only place of peace and security is Jannah. So do anything to get there. Sacrifice anything to get there. Do whatever Allah has ordered just to get in there. Once you get in there, you're fine. You're good. 
لهم دار السلام عند ربهم وهو وليهم بما كانوا يعملون because of what they used to do not what they used to think only what they used to do not what they used to plan about that when I turn 25 then I'll do it when I get married then I'll do it no they did it and when they did it then Allah will reward them He will be their friend And mention, O Prophet, the day when he will gather them together and say, O company of jinn, you have misled many of mankind. And their allies among mankind will say, Our Lord, some of us made use of others. And we have now reached our term, which you appointed for us. He will say, the fire is your residence. See the people who cooperate with each other in sin? What is their residence? Fire. So even if... The whole world supports you in doing something wrong. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Why? Because the end, the residence will be fire. Wherein you will abide eternally. Except for what Allah wills. Indeed, your Lord is wise and knowing. And thus will we make some of the wrongdoers, allies of others, for what they used to earn. Because a person, he seeks who? People who are like-minded. People who think like him. who act like him, who have the same priorities like him. So in this world, what happens? A person finds those who will support him. So just because we have supporters in what we're doing, it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make what we're doing right. What is it that tells us whether our actions are right or wrong? Allah's word. يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ O company of jinn and mankind, did there not come to you messengers from among you, relating to you my verses, and warning you of the meeting of this day of yours? They will say, we bear witness against ourselves. And the worldly life had deluded them, and they will bear witness against themselves that they were disbelievers. Right now, it's very difficult to accept one's wrong action. Even if the Qur'an is shown as an evidence. Even if the words of the Prophet ﷺ are shown as proof. What happens? It's very difficult for some people to accept that they're wrong. To acknowledge their mistake. And let's think about ourselves. It's very difficult to acknowledge our mistakes. But remember, if we don't acknowledge them today, if we don't fix them today, then tomorrow, there's no getting away from them. A person will confess, we bear witness against ourselves. Why? Why did they do this wrong? Because the worldly life had deluded them. And they will bear witness against themselves that they were disbelievers. That is because your Lord would not destroy the cities for wrongdoing while their people were unaware. People are always warned. They are given knowledge first. So have we been given knowledge of the Qur'an, of the Haqq? Yes. Now the test begins. What do we do? وَلِكُلِّنْ دَرَجَاتٌ مِمَّا عَمَلُوا وَلِكُلِّنْ دَرَجَاتٌ مِّمَّا عَمِلُوا وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا يَعْمَلُونَ And for all our degrees from what they have done. And your Lord is not unaware of what they do. وَلِكُلِّنْ دَرَجَاتٌ Each person has a rank. According to what? According to مِّمَّا عَمِلُوا According to what they have done. So each person's status is according to his actions. What is our level, our rank before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We do not know. We don't know where we stand. But what we can see is the deeds that we are committing. The deeds, the actions that we are committing. The words that we are saying. Because ultimately, our status is determined by what? Our actions. مِمَّا amilu, And these actions that we do, وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah is not unaware of what we do. So what is it that we should be concerned about? Hmm? Amal. Actions. You know, it's like the more stuff you can put on your resume, the greater you are. Right? The more stuff you can put on your resume, the greater you are. The more worth you have. So what is our worth near Allah? Is it determined by the money that we have made? Is it determined by the amount of makeup that we've put in our face? Or the kind of clothes that we're wearing? Or the kind of food that we can cook? No. It is determined by the deeds that we perform. The, the actions. The actions that we fill our lives with. 
that we perform in our lives, our worth near Allah is determined by our amal, our deeds. And Allah is not unaware of what we do. So what do we see here? That daraja, a person's rank near Allah increases with what? With actions. So the closer we want to be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we have to perform good deeds. Allah says in Hadith Qudsi, we learned that a servant draws near to Allah. How? By performing the actions that Allah has made obligatory upon him. So for example, when a person performs the five prayers regularly, is he drawing closer to Allah? Has his daraja increased? Yes. Now when a person fasts in the month of Ramadan, has his daraja increased? Yes. And then when a person moves on from the obligatory to the voluntary, meaning he's performing the fard, but in addition to that, he's also performing extra good deeds. Like for example, sadaqah, is that fard? Is it fard? Is it an obligation to give in charity? No. But when a person does it, then is he drawing closer to Allah? Is his rank increasing? Yes, it is. Don't we want to feel important? We all do. We all do. We all want that our worth should be more. This is why we expect, we want that people should respect us. That they should pay attention to us. That they should acknowledge us. They should appreciate our efforts. Or at least they should reciprocate. Isn't it so? But remember, sometimes you go crazy trying to please people. But they never reciprocate. They never even say a word of thanks. But when a person does something for the sake of Allah sincerely, then his rank near Allah becomes higher. So let's forget about what people can give us for what we do. And let's be concerned about our rank that will be increased near Allah because of the good deeds that we do. وَلِكُلِّنْ دَرَجَاتٌ مِمَّا عَمِلُوا وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah is not unaware of what people do. Because sometimes what happens, you do something good, nobody even notices it. Nobody even notices it. Has it ever happened with you? That you try so hard to do something, to prepare something, to make something, so beautifully, so well, in time, in the best way, and you bring your project to school and the teacher even forgets to ask you about it. Huh? Or for instance, at home, your mom never asked you, but you unloaded the dishwasher. <laughs> and she comes home and she starts loading the dishwasher. And she's like, oh, did I unload the dishwasher today? Like, I did it. Oh, okay. And like, ah, oh, thanks. Nothing like that, right? It happens because they're human beings. They forget. They cannot even keep track of what they're doing. How can they keep track of what you're doing? We cannot even keep track of the blessings, the gifts that Allah is giving us. How can they keep track of the blessings of the gifts that we are giving to people? They cannot. It's beyond their ability. So who is it that we should expect reward from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's not feed off of praise right, from people in order to continue doing good. Let's feed off of what? Of this realization that when I have done something, he knows about it. He knows. And I want to deposit my deed with who? With him. Because I did it for him. وَرَبُّكَ الْغَنِيُّ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ And your Lord is the free of need, the possessor of mercy. Meaning He does not need you to obey Him. When you obey Him, you don't make Him greater. Who do you elevate? Yourself. Who do you benefit? Yourself. Who do you enrich? Yourself. Because Allah is ghani. And He is the rahmah, the possessor of mercy. So He has given us a chance to do something in our lives. He is merciful. إِنْ يَشَأْ If He wills, He can do away with you and give succession after you to whomsoever He pleases. He wills, just as He produced you from the descendants of another people. So Allah is ghani. Even from punishing His servants. He does not benefit by rewarding them. He does not benefit by punishing them. He does not need to reward us or punish us. When we are rewarded or when we are punished, it's because of us. Because we gain or we lose. We benefit or we lose. Anas radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet ﷺ saw an old man walking. 
and he was being supported by his two sons. So the Prophet ﷺ asked, asked about him that what's wrong with him? Why is he walking like that? Is everything okay with him? So the people said that this man had vowed to go on foot to the Kaaba. He had vowed that he would walk all the way to the Kaaba, meaning he would not at all sit on a horse, on a camel, on a donkey, nothing. He will just walk. Now this is something that is difficult to do. And clearly when he did it, an old man, what happened to him? He was not able to walk. So what was he doing? He was taking the support of two of his sons so that he could walk. Now he's putting himself in hardship and he's also putting his children in hardship. So the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَنْ تَعْذِيبِ هَذَا نَفْسَهُ لَغَنِي Allah is not in need of this old man's torturing himself. Allah does not need it that this man should torture himself. We don't need to torture ourselves in order to please Allah. What do we need to do? Do what Allah has asked us to do. And when we do it, then who do we benefit? Ourselves. When we leave it, then who do we harm? Ourselves. إِنَّمَا تُوَعَدُونَ لَآتِ Indeed, what you are promised is coming. Death is coming. It is approaching fast. It's on its way. And you will not cause failure. To who? To Allah. So where will you run? Where will you hide? Prepare for that death. It is the most certain thing in your life. قُلْ يَا قَوْمِ اعْمَلُوا عَلَى مَكَانَتِكُمْ إِنِّي عَامِلْ Say, O oh my people, work according to your position. For indeed, I am also working. So what do we see? That once we know the truth, once we get to know what Allah has ordered, then what is necessary? عَمَلْ Action. And you are going to know who will have succession in the home. Indeed, the wrongdoers will not succeed. And the mushrikeen, the polytheists, assign to Allah from that which He created of crop and livestock a share. According to what? According to their own whims. And they say, this is for Allah by their claim. And this is for our partners whom they associate with Allah. But what is for their partners does not reach Allah. While what is for Allah, this reaches their partners. Evil is that which they rule. We see that the mushrikeen, they used to allot shares of their produce. Right? A portion for their gods. A portion for each god. So one portion was dedicated to one idol. Another portion dedicated to another idol. And one portion they would also dedicate to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what would happen if ever... The shares, the portions, they fell short. They ran out of it. And there were still one or two idols left. What would they do? They would take from Allah's portion, meaning the portion that they had given to Allah, all right, and they would give it to those idols. But if ever they fell short in the portion of Allah, they would never ever take from another idol, from an idol, and give it to Allah. Now, this is something that they came up with. And it seems very ridiculous. But think about it. When we are also short on something, when we have a limited amount of something, then whose haq, whose right is it that we leave first and foremost? Generally, whose right is it that we leave? Allah's right. If you had guests over and your kitchen was a mess and it's midnight by the time they leave, and you are one of those women who believe, firmly believe that the kitchen must be spick and span before I rest my head. Then what will happen? At 12 o'clock midnight also, what is the woman doing? She is going to sacrifice her sleep to clean the kitchen. Right? And if she hasn't prayed, then what will she do? Just pray for fard. You know, in hadith you learn that the woman who performs her fard and then she fasts in Ramadan and she is obedient to her husband and she can enter Jannah from any gate. Right? I'm so good to my husband, right? So I can just pray fard. Leave my sunnah, leave my witr. Whose haq is it that we neglect? Allah's haq. Allah's haq. We don't cut down on our sleep. We don't cut down on our fun. We don't cut down on anything. What do we cut, cut down on? Worship. Servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, evil is that which they rule. We have limited amount of money also. Sometimes what happens? Money has to be given for, you know, house expenses, food, etc. But then when money has to be given for some fees for an Islamic course, we don't have it. When a book has to be bought, we don't have it. We can buy 
five bottles of coke easily for one book we find difficult to purchase i ran out of money i ran out of money why why do we not prioritize the haq of allah when allah gives us so much generously why can we not obey him generously why can we not give back also show some gratitude for the love that he shows us for the generosity and the kindness that he shows us day in and day out constantly the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah says i am the best of all who are associated to me meaning all these partners that they ascribe to me i am still the best allah is still the perfect one Whoever does an action while associating partners with me then it is for the partners and not for me. So, O oh people, make your action sincere for Allah, for indeed Allah does not accept any action unless it is sincerely done for him. And do not say this is for Allah and this is for our relatives, whereas nothing of it is for Allah. Meaning when a person has when he makes these kind of intentions that oh Yeah sure maybe Allah will also be pleased with me if I do this no make your intention sincerely for who for Allah azza wa jalla and give him his haq and likewise to many of the polytheists their partners have made to seem pleasing the killing of their children in order to bring about their destruction and to cover them with confusion in their religion and if Allah had willed they would not have done so so leave them and that which they invent killing children just imagine a child killing a child it's a crime i mean if even even the heart doesn't accept it even if the child is in the womb even if the child is in the womb have you ever seen a woman being so happy about the baby that's still in her womb passing her hand over the over the stomach right as if she's holding the child and other people also can i touch your belly can i can i can i just feel the baby the child cannot even be seen but still look at the love that people have for children so killing a child whether the child is still in the womb or has been given birth to this is a crime but yet we see this evil action has been made okay by some people isn't it it has been made okay it's considered fine Remember that killing children is a major sin. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked that what is the greatest sin in the sight of Allah? And he said that you set up a rival unto Allah though he alone created you. The person said indeed that is a great sin. What is next? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to kill your son lest he should share your food with you. To kill your own child out of fear that he will share your food with you, your money with you. أو من كان ميتا فأحييناه وجعلنا له نورا يمشي به في الناس and is one who was dead